everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host Mr. Bevers. Today we've got our pre-release Hour of Devastation box to go through. Um, I was away the weekend of pre-release. I didn't get to play. I was camping for my birthday. Um, so we're gonna jump right into this here. Um, I think today what I want to do um, which I haven't done really in the past with these pre-release kits is I'm gonna actually look at the cards and build the deck um, I you know I think I tried this with one of the pre-releases way back and and people were kind of like you know all right with it but not too crazy about it but you know what I want to make this a little bit of a longer video and I kind of want to go into like maybe my my theory behind how this stuff works so I always like to hide this stuff so there's our die the um I kind of wish they had used a different text than black on these red dice. They're not that clear to read from far away. Um, I don't know. You guys can't see that. but So, like, that's 20. What is that, 16? That's a 3. I mean, it's okay in the light, I guess. But, like, if this is across the table from you, you're not going to really see it. Like, if I put it down here... Can you read that now? Looks like it says 2, right? What does it say now? 13? How about now? 7? It's a 7? There you go. Anyway, as you can see, there it's a little hard to read. So let's go ahead and pull this stuff out of here. So the the pre-release kit is pretty cool. It's got like a it's like a little cartouche, right? This thing that folds up, which is kind of cool. It's the same sort of thing as what they did with Almond Ket. Um, and the box obviously closes up fairly well as well. Provided I can actually get it to close properly. There you go. But it locks, right? So that you can't... It doesn't just pull apart. You have to actually kind of like give it a little bit of a tug. Because these flaps catch on the inside of this. So there you go. That's pretty cool. And then, as always, you know, you get, like, your little booklet about here you go and the stuff. And you've got your five hours of things. It's, you know, like, go and do these things and get a prize. So, there you go. That's that stuff. Let's see what our promo card is. Hour of Revelation. So, there you go. It's a six mana cost, three white, three generic um, sorcery. Hour of Revelation costs three less to cast. If there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield, destroy all non-land permanents. So, Wrath of God for six, but also for three white if there's too many things on the battlefield. That's kind of cool. Um, I guess it's like a oh shit scenario, right? Like, I mean, you're only going to play it if if things are going super sideways. We're going to open up the Almond Ket first because... Um, you know, everyone's seen lots of Almond Ket. And we're going to do it like this. I'll put those over there. I'm going to go in colors. So white, blue, red. And I'm just going to kind of... Trial of Ambition, very good. Impeccable Timing, also good. Cartouche of Strength, very good. Sacred Excavation, kind of... Mm. Uh, Shadowstorm Vizier, um, not necessarily a bad card. And we got a Cycle Land and a Full Art Mountain. Okay, so Full Art Mountain can go here. We'll put that there for now. And the Zombie Token, which we don't really care about, so we'll put it over there. Um, now, I also haven't really looked at any of the Hour of Devastation cards, so this is going to be a learning experience for me. So, bear with me while I read most of the cards and take forever to do this. So, again, this white... Blue, red, green. Okay. 
we got a mythic out of our almond cat pack, but it's a cruel reality. We're going to put our multicolored cards down here. And a cruel reality is not a card you're going to play in limited. Like you're just you're just not at the beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature uh, or planeswalker. If that player can't, they lose five life. I mean, great. It's cool if you can get this out late game in an, in a sealed or a draft type scenario, but the chances of you doing so are very unlikely. So, I mean, like, if we just look here, right, our white is not very strong so far. These two uh, resolves are not the best. Um, the Sparring Mummy's okay. The Impeccable Timing is okay. We probably wouldn't play either of these unless we're in a cycle deck. So chances are we're not going to be playing white at this moment in time, even though we have the Hour of Revelation as our, uh... Black doesn't look terrible, but at the same time it doesn't look great. Red looks okay. Green looks okay. Um, Edifice obviously goes in pretty much any deck. Which it's just a solid card. First pack of Hour. Let's continue here. So, blue, white, a desert, we've got lots of black, another desert, doomfall, alright, and our rare is a chaos maw, 6-6 six, six for 7. When Chaos Maw enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each other creature. That's a that's a spicy one. We got the the red exerted eternal. Um, oh, it's internal now instead of embalmed. So that's interesting. And then the brick counters and the negative one, negative ones. Put those over there. So far, it's looking like black is pretty good. Um, oh, why did I put that there? That's a double card. I'm just going to go down there for the moment. Green's a little light. Traveler's Amulet. Huh. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Survivor's Encampment seems pretty interesting. Wall of the Forgotten Pharaohs. Just an 04 that pings if you have deserts. Chandra's Defeat. One mana instant. Deals five damage target red creature or red planeswalker. If that permanent is a Chandra planeswalker, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Interesting. So it's a red card that defeats Chandra. That's kind of interesting. Gideon's Defeat. A white card that defeats Gideon. Exile target white creature that uh, that's attacking or blocking. If it was Gideon Planeswalker, you gain five life. Wow. Obelisk Spider. This seems like a pretty cool card. This is uh, So this is a 1-4 for three with reach that says whenever Obelisk Spider deals combat damage to a creature, put a negative one, negative one counter on that creature. Whenever you put uh, more uh, one or more negative one negative one counters on a creature, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. This card is gonna be sweet in Commander, um, I would think. Basically, multiplayer formats because it's a one four that sits there. It keeps you around. If it does damage, however it does damage, it it makes everyone lose life. Pretty sweet. And that's a multicolor card, so it'll go down there. And we got Gar God Pharaoh's Gift. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. It gains haste until end of turn. That seems pretty good, actually. That seems like an interesting way to bring back all of your little derpy creatures that died early on in the game. Now, it's a 7 mana cost. Oh, man, the new the new lands look amazing, too. The new full art lands. Like, this is a full art land from our, as opposed to uh, the uh, Amonkhet. And it just looks... 
It's the art on it is very great. Just, just beautiful. All right, let's let's keep going here. White five damage target attacking or blocking. They had to sort of give in a better impeccable timing, essentially. Like, impeccable timing is only three mana, or two mana instead of three, but it only does three damage instead of five. Five can take it a lot more. Uh, Archer, whenever you can. Oh, that seems pretty good. Flash Flying 2 3 Flyer, that seems alright. Afflict seems very good. Um, so, I'm pretty happy to see that in the black. A 5 6 Trampling Rhino for, for six? Yes. Yes, I, I would be okay to play that card. Another another desert. Gift of Strength. Plus three, plus three in reach until end of turn. Okay. Crash through. They go gain trample and draw a card. Doesn't seem like anything. Manalith seems like a really good card to play in your sealed pool. Um, it just is mana fixing for three. Very good. Uh, Feverant Paincaster. One damage target player. You could exert it. It does one damage target creature instead. Interesting. Tenacious Hunter. 4-4 four, for four, 4. As long as a creature has a negative 1, negative 1 counter on it, it has Vigilance and Death Touch. Whoa. That's pretty cool. And we got Dunes of the Dead, which is when Dunes of the Dead is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 2-2 black zombie. So this is one of those deserts that you want to sack it to the other deserts. I don't think we've come across one of those other deserts yet, have we? Oh, here we go. The Ipnu Rivlet. Ta pay to tap, sacrifice a desert. Target player puts the top four cards of his or her graveyard into his or her grave... Uh, from top blah, 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 the top four cards of the library into graveyard. So again, you'd want to like sack this desert to that because you get a two two out of it and you mill them for four. So that's pretty cool. And our rare is another desert, which is hostile desert, which is uh, exile a land card from your graveyard. Hostile desert becomes a three four elemental creature that is still a land until end of turn. That's kind of cool. Hey, we got a foil rare in this pack. Refuse to cooperate. So there you go. Uh, refuse is refuse deals damage to target spells controller equal to that spell's converted mana cost. And cooperate is the aftermath, um, which is copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. These are both instants, which is pretty nice because the old split cards were mostly all sorceries. Some of them were instants, but then the second half was generally... Uh, uh, sorcery. So that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Interesting. So refuse you cast when they've got something on the stack. So like when they cast a spell, you cast this and re you, you don't counter their spell. But you do damage to them equal to the amount of mana that they spent on that spell. That's kind of interesting. And then a planes and a zombie token. One more pack. It, it's really looking like we're probably going to be playing black red. Maybe splash some, some something else. I don't know, but we'll see. Sandblast again. We'll take a look at, at what's actually playable versus what's not in a second here. Without weakness seems all right. Another desert. Catcher's Avenger. I don't think we're going to be playing white or green, to be completely honest. Jace's defeat. Counter target blue spell if it was ca if it was a Jace the Planeswalker you scry too. So there's the defeat. It's interesting that the Jace's defeat is two mana, whereas the uh, the white and red ones were both a mana each. Interesting. Uh, overcome. It's just a worse overrun. Sorcery speed, but instead of 3-3 three, three in trample, it's only 2-2 two, two in trample. So, I mean, like... I guess. Dunes of the Dead. Another one of these. Wow, we got a Mythic. Anesh. Cryo Sphinx Sovereign. Uh, so that might push us into blue. Because, like, dear me... 4-4 uh, four, four flyer for 6, and Sphinx spells you cast cost 2 less. Um, and whenever uh, 
this guy or another Sphinx enters the battlefield under your control. Reveal the top four cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other pile in the graveyard. That's interesting. And we got the Sun Scourge Champion token. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that white is pretty much right out, even though we have the Hour of Revelation. Um, Oketra's Avenger seems like it's okay in a white deck if you are if you've got enough to back it up. Which is when it attacks, uh, you can exert it. If you do, prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. So it's a three-one that can basically be like, "Hey, I'm you know I'm I'm swinging in, and you can't kill me unless you can exile me." Sandblast um, seems like an okay removal spell. I don't think you would want to run two of them to be honest, but maybe. I mean, three mana is a lot of mana to hold up just to destroy a attacking or blocking creature. Gideon's defeat is very very specific. Um, I don't think you would play it unless you know your opponent is white. It's a fine sideboard card against someone else who's playing white. Um, Act of Heroism, untapped target creature, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn, it can block an additional creature. Seems like an okay combat trick. Um, Aven of Enduring Hope, when Aven enters the battlefield, you gain three life. So for three, for five mana, you get a three, three flyer and three life, just like Angel of Mercy, right? is essentially what this card is, only it costs one more mana? Or did Angel of Mercy cost five as well? I can't remember. It's it's a fine card. It's not terrible. You would play it in a white deck if you're playing white. Disposal Mummy seems okay as well. Exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Yep, fine. It's a 2-3 zombie for three. Fine. You're not playing the resolves. Like, those are just not played. Impeccable Timing is fine for uh, early game removal. Um, Sparring Mummy is also okay, especially in an Exert-type deck, but white, the white is way too weak. We're not going to be playing white. Um, so, obviously, yes, we would want to play that. Um, I don't think, again, this would be like a sideboard card. Uh, what's this? Cunning Survivor. When you cycle or discard a card, Cunning Survivor gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn, and can't be blocked this turn. That seems... Okay, like I think you would probably run that in a blue deck, um, especially cycling. These guys seem pretty good as well. Um, two, three flying flash guys for four seems like okay. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Um, that seems okay. Um, okay, a two, a two one with prowess and afflict two. That seems pretty good. Um, yep, yeah, unsummon. Aerial Guide, yeah, can lift up your dudes off the ground. Floodwaters is just a very good card for the blue cycle deck. Naga Oracle is also fairly good. Uh, Excavation is pretty good. Target cards with cycling from your graveyard, provided you're playing cycling. And then the Hecma Sentinels is not terrible for the blue cycling deck as well. Now, to be fair, how many cycle cards do we have? One. We had one blue cycling card. So, like, for instance, this guy, not so great. This card, not so great. This guy, okay. This is all right. This is okay. This is fine. 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 And this is fine. Well, this guy's not even that great either because you're not really cycling things. Um, so he's kind of, like, not great. He's a 1-3. He's okay. You might play him. Um, if you had enough cycling things, you would definitely play him. Okay, so then in black, without weakness, seems like an okay card. Uh, gains indestructible until end of turn, or you can cycle it for two. That seems pretty good. Um, a 4-2 zombie for four seems pretty good, especially since it has cycling for one black. Um, a 2-2 two, two for two that has afflict one that definitely seems like a playable card. Um, I would definitely put it in. Uh, Moaning Wall, mm, that's tough. If I was playing the blue cycling deck, I would play that card probably, just because it can cycle for two, and it's an 0-5 defender. Um, Doomfall. Target opponent exiles a creature he or she controls. Target opponent reveals his or her hand, and you choose... Yeah, that seems like an okay card to play. Uh, without weakness, again, probably play... Two copies would be a little bit of a stretch, I think, but but maybe you play them both. I guess it depends. A 3-4 lifelinker for, four, for five. That seems pretty good. Um, when this dies, if you control a desert... Uh, or there's a desert in your graveyard, target player discards a card. Uh, based on how many deserts we have, that's probably playable. Cruel Reality. 
I still don't think that I would play this in a in a limited format, to be completely honest. I think it costs way too much mana for it to be worth it. If you're casting this on turn 7 and you haven't already won the game, you're probably on the back foot quite a bit. And uh, I don't know if this will turn the game around for you at that point. It might. So maybe it's in the maybe pile, but like I don't think that you would run it to be honest. Bone Picker, obviously very good card. Uh, Painful Lesson seems fine. You basically gain two cards. Miasmic Mummy is also alright. Trial of Ambition is definitely very good removal. Uh, Dune Beetle is, is fine. I think it goes with the Moaning Wall. I think, I think these three are kind of like the maybe pile, and then this is the rest of your black. Like, these, these are the ones that you would want to play black for, probably. Um... The black looks like okay. It looks it looks fine, but it doesn't look crazy good. Let's see what red we've got. Um, Kindled Fury, one mana cost, plus one plus zero and first strike, and that's a maybe. That's I'm gonna put that in the. This would go in the black deck for sure. This is a maybe pile. Uh, this guy seems okay. This card seems not very good at all. Um. Whenever you cast non-creature spells, Firebrand Archer deals one damage. That seems okay. Chandra's Defeat, again, very... This is very uh, situational. If your opponent's playing red, you would sideboard this in for sure. Another crash through, no. 2-3 with Menace, and you may exert it and if when it attacks, and if you do, it gets plus 2 plus 0. Oh. That seems pretty good. Chaos Moss seems very good um, for red. Uh, Defiant Kenra seems fine, just a just a bear. Emberhorn is very good. Blazing Arrow Volley is not the best. Um, Nimble uh, Blade Kenra is okay. It's not really what you're looking to play, to be honest. But maybe, maybe. Overcome seems like a fine trick. Same with Gift of Strength. That seems okay. Um, you may exert this when it attacks. If you do, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. That seems pretty good. Um, Tenacious Hunter seems very good. I think I would probably play that. A four four for four is just very good, and it gets vigilance and death touch if something has a negative one. Um, yeah, that hippo for sure. Uh, Ambuscade. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power. That is a very good removal spell. Because they don't fight. It just deals damage. Um, Naga, 3-3 three, three for 3. It's basically a bigger bear. Greater Sandworm is very good. Cartouche is fine. This is very situational. And that is also situational. Um, green is actually not bad. The green was actually not terrible. Um, oh, it's not like heavy. There's not a lot of green, but it's actually got some pretty decent cards in it. Um, especially if you play, if you were to play green black, then you could bring in the um, the obelisk spider for sure. You could even bring in the spring to mind um, to play it as like a splash, which would then allow you to play the uh, consigned to oblivion, which is return target non line member owner's hand. Target opponent discards two cards. Um, refuse to cooperate seems like an interesting card. I would. I would probably want to try playing this card just to see what it does. Um, but again, seven mana. Like, so if they're playing something big and you have seven mana untapped, yeah, you can, you're going to do something, some serious damage to them with this card and then copy it. Um, provided it's an instant or sorcery. Um, or you basically just hold off and you target the next thing that you do, which would be pretty cool. But at the same time, Maybe it's not really worth it. I don't know. I think I would probably end up playing... It's tough. It's tough. It's definitely not white. That's for sure. Uh, the Manalith would go in for sure. The God Pharaoh's Gift would probably be okay. The Edifice of Authority for sure goes into pretty much every deck. Manalith goes into every deck. Traveler's Amulet would be okay if we were going to splash a third color. So maybe we would play a combination of red, black, blue. Um, that's probably what I would do is I would end up going red, blue, splash, black, maybe? Or maybe I would go... I really want to play the spider. 
The spider seems really good, but at the same time, my black has no other cards that add negative one counters to things. Um, if my black or my green had some more of the, um, like, put negative one, negative one counters on creatures that you control when they come into play, then I would probably want to play the spider more. The spider's very good, but at the same time, there's not much synergy with everything else that I have in the, in the pool. So, I would probably go, let's see. Black doesn't have a lot of creatures, and it only has one Afflict guy. So black would be a splash color, for sure. So maybe we would go red-blue, or blue-green, splash-black. I think that's what we would do. We would probably go blue-green, or blue-red, and splash-black. I think that's what we would end up doing. And then, of course, you could, you know, of course, you've got your two dunes. You'd play those for sure. Especially if you're if you're splashing black, you'd play you'd play these ones. Maybe you'd play these as well. And this, I don't think you'd play that. And there's your evolve. Like most of our lands are are pretty good for a blue, blue green, blue red, blue black splash something. So, I think you would go blue just just for the fact that you could play almost all your deserts and splash the colors accordingly because evolving wilds lets you splash survivors encampment lets you splash um the canyon slough lets you splash mana lift traveler's amulet those all let you splash i think we would definitely be playing at least we would probably play three color maybe we would even go four i don't know um it's a tough pool there wasn't like a, a clear path in my opinion but hey Tell me what you think below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'm sure I'm sorry this video was very, very, very long. I didn't mean it to go this long, but there it is. This is sort of like a deck build. I'm not going to do this with, of course, all the pre-release kits that I have. Um, I will stick to the quick openings and things, but I figured let's do one where we do kind of like a little deck tech and talk about the cards and talk about how we think that they would play and what we would do. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I've been your host, Mr. Bevers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out my store, nirvanastore.ca, as well as my Patreon, where you can get discounts to the store and things like that, as well as I do the grab bags, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, may your pulls ever be better.